Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair. And this time I have to think about uh, this uh, because somebody mentioned that uh, I haven't uh, assembled the mount uh, on the back of the Canon FD50 uh, 1.8. And I think yeah there is a problem there. So I dig actually deeper, much deeper into it and try to figure out what could be done about this. And uh, I mean, I haven't found a repair manual for this lens. And uh, I mean, there is the older uh, with the breech lock, uh, which does not have that problem. So I think, okay, um, what do I uh, actually uh, do to, to figure it out. So I simply disassemble it and, and set marks in here where the different parts should sit when you assemble it. So uh, and just uh, so we can see this lens is actually working uh, and it works pretty good if I set it to something like 16 or 22 or so the aperture will uh, of course uh, do what it should no problem and the uh, depth of field button is also working so that's fine even if I set it to uh, A on the lens it will also work and so there's no problem there now now we know the lens is working as a shoot. So I'll just take it off and see what we can figure out. There are two parts here on the back which sits in a way like you think okay how should they sit when I assemble it. So um, I actually set a lot of mark in here uh, both outside and inside and try to figure it out. See, normally the lens, when it's attached to the camera, um, the two small pins, it will say this one and this one, will be pushed in and um, in that way make it possible to turn the, the actual mount, the black part here. So we can just try to do that. But before doing so, I found out that setting the lens to 22, aperture 22, makes, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> set it to A. That's what I found out. Um, and uh, in that way, push down the two uh, pins here, which normally is pushed by when you put the lens on the mount here. So by pushing them in, I mean fully down, and uh, if it's possible here, press it down. One should be able, <laughs> I need a hand, hmm. one should be able to actually press uh, I mean move the mount <coughs> just to unlock it in a way yeah here it comes and then we can turn it uh, let's see where it dot here now so I can just turn it all the way over to if it was on the camera there so um, and then the aperture is actually working. So right now it looks like it's sit on the camera. So uh, it could be whatever, um, like we will see. I could just also just let it be on the. I mean, it's better if it's. Well, if you have it the cap on, you'll set it on the camera. Yeah, maybe. Okay, go back, push the button here, and turn it again back to where it was there starting point so now 
I um, found out setting a mark here with the inline with the index mark here all the way down here and that's on the metal ring the little pin here up here uh, you see not uh, not the deeper one I mean not this down here but the other that's part of the ring here um, that should also sit in line and uh, so I'll just take it off it will say click and click and click so when I take off the ring but that what that's uh, how it should be if it was normal so over the three screws around here <clears throat> so no matter how it sit uh, things will just uh, be taken apart then I can lift up the the mount here the ring here will probably yeah you will see it will turn <clears throat> doesn't really matter it makes it more realistic in a way see I also set a mark here you see this uh, lump here should be in line with the with the release button here not actually the release button but more the uh, if we look closer to it more down to here I will show it uh, when you when I take off the the mount it will sit like this so now I can turn <clears throat> I mean take off the mount and by doing that I will push this a little away it will uh, make it easier so flip it over and see what's going on here now <laughs> even more marks so the um, this pin here I mean the release button of course it sits where it, where it should but the um, ring here which is in a way connected to the aperture ring over here and um, of course I can move it um, just a little but if I turn the aperture ring here of course I can move it even more so what I found out is the it's best I mean it will work with the aperture ring sit on uh, something like a the a should be in line with the index mark but um, then I figure it out okay there's something that doesn't work so um, let's see the ring here that actually <clears throat> make the connection to the aperture assembly in here should also sit not all the way over to here and not all the other way over to the other end over here no should sit like something in between there's a hole here and it should uh, sit and I also set a mark here where it should sit and uh, the uh, ring here it will say the aperture ring has to sit on 22 so because this part this little uh, yeah stick out or so has to sit in line with the screw here and up here 
I also set a mark up here, so it should be something like in line with the with the stick out here of the release button. So now it actually sits where things I mean things are lined up at the moment, and it will make it easier, much easier. You see this little cut out here is actually uh, this uh, part here I mean this uh, yeah part of the part <laughs> um, should actually go in here so if we set it like this so you can see so by putting the mount on you have to press this this uh, the release button in a little and um, this one this pin here <coughs> does not if it sits over to here this part here cannot come over it so we have to move this a little away so it's more in line with the the mark I set here and also set a mark here yeah you <laughs> you maybe think hey wait 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 maybe too much mark but so it is and I also set a mark here on which you probably can see here and it should be in line with the the release button here this part of it not the release button itself but in here so now we have to put it on but we this uh, pin here it will um, <clears throat> if I just put it on it will uh, interfere with with this part of I mean with this uh, it will simply go on to here so therefore I have to move this out of place by that then I can press it on <clears throat> so when we are going to put it on see the fork kind of uh, way have to go over this pin and by having a good grip on the mount have to have it hopefully it will work I mean hopefully you can see what's going on there Maybe it's easier if I let it show in this way. Nah. Difficult. Yeah, you probably get it. So when I put it on over the pin here. So now you can s hopefully you can see there are two pins in there. This one and the other pin in there. So I have to move this a little that way. Hold on to the the uh, mount and simply lower it over. And then you can release this button. So now we just have to turn it a bit um, and press in the release button here. Where is my mark? Uh, something is not correct you see this pin here have to sit over here and maybe this one has to move a little just a tiny amount something like that so now when I put this on I simply move it a little so but well by trial and error I think we will make it so put it on again like this push the pin here lower it and at the same time press the button here I think we can 
make it there. So now it's on where it should sit. Not fully. Uh, has to be more over like this. There. Now. Then we can move the aperture blades. So you have to fiddle a little with the mount. But now it stays on and will not just flew away. Then I've, I try to figure out how sh should this one sit because there were I have some problems when I turn the mount and uh, try to line up the two red dots here. It would not really work. But if we look here, we have the red dot, we have the little pin, and um, then I found out in between this area here, there should be a mark. And it will be not so far from the one of the screws that sits over here. So if I lower it over, um, let's see, this pin has to sit there. And now I should be able to press it on. Maybe I have to fiddle a little, but the screw has to line up in the hole, as you can see here. So now I can release it, get a screw, and then screw it in to place there. And another one over here. So there. So now we can see what we actually ended up with. This mark here, it goes in line with the index mark. And the aperture ring at 22. So now I can turn the by pushing in the the um, the release button, and in that way, turn it all the way over to where it should sit. I mean, so now, and then it's ready to put on the camera again. And then we can see if it will work. Wow. Now take it off. And things will sit where it should. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, if you take the lens apart by just, yeah, okay, I will unscrew it. Yeah, I haven't taken any notes just by doing that wow fine yeah we'll see into it just take things apart where was my tool just oh something to click but what to do yeah I just take this off so uh, okay how do I actually assemble it again hmm since the repair manual does not tell that, I mean, I look for the, for some of the other, and it does not tell the, how they should line up, uh, as I see. So, let's we just do it again. <clears throat> see, aperture at 22, because it will not work if I set it to something like 2.8 or whatever. Because this pin will be over here. So if I do that, set that pin to there, there's a mark here and here. And uh, think, okay, I can just put the, the, the mount on by pushing this. 
and uh, this is lined up with the release pin yeah no I will um, just try to I mean I will show you what's actually going on put it on the pin here that's fine that this one is released so I can put it on yeah and it will work but the problem is if I release push in the release button and turn the lens you will not at all be able to get it all the way up to the mark here no matter what so yeah yeah I can turn the set it to something like 22 and maybe turn it even more but no it's not possible why well open it again you see this uh, area down here we just get rid of this so I can show this part here will I mean it has to sit over on this side because if it's uh, if it's over here if we can do that yeah, I can turn the aperture ring uh, then I can move this so it is something like over here if I want to set the, the mount on this part here this part here the fork will it will I can lower it over the pin here but I cannot move this part here because this sticks out too much when it's on on the pin here so that's why this has to sit I mean almost all the way over to where it should sit so going to set it to 22 and you see the the notch here this notch this part here and then you have to press it down if this part here is up it will go against the um, the part here this area here and when it sits correct it will go down to this lower part here that's why this one this pin has to sit where it, it um, should sit when it's correct so now I can uh, fully put it on again everything is lined up there also this area here there's a mark here but I also made a mark up here it's just because so the the little fork here is free of this area here especially this one it could be different in your lens but um, I I don't know if there is any more variety of this exact lens so now I can put it on again by lower it over the, the fork here push this pin over here and lower it over release this and turn I mean twist this a little by pressing in the release button and then it says click into place and now it sits where it should now I can uh, um, put the ring on here and it should be in line with the red dot here outside the lens So find the screw holes here and the marker I set which sits between the two uh, cut out here and in line with the index mark 
it sits correct so there where did it go here so Other screw here. And not so easy with gloves on, but it works. So now my lens is back to normal again. And uh, yeah, you see, <laughs> I cannot mount it on the camera because I have to release the the mount so it's the two red dots are in line so by pushing in the release button here and turn the lens it can be a little I mean in my lens it's a bit uh, stiff here so I just have to press even more and it goes into place and say click so now I can mount it on here and set it whatever uh, aperture um, and I can even oh, and I can even stop down the lens if I want that fully depth of field and then I can turn the aperture ring so uh, it's actually working as you can see set it to a it depends how much on how much light coming into the camera but I can just set it to 22 and it will always close down to whatever or 5.6 or so so then I can just take off the lens and uh, now it's back to work again. Turn this and uh, yeah. I think uh, this can help. I mean, it was a shame I didn't, uh, was so much into um, in this uh, video I made some years ago about this lens. But uh, now I figure it out. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> so uh, I hope you can use the info here uh, for this particular lens. So see you sooner. Bye bye.